Father, receive all the praise, receive all the honor, because you're just a faithful God, you're just a wonderful God. You're just an exalted one of Israel. We thank you. We glorify you today. In Jesus' precious and mighty name we have prayed. Say amen. Say amen. Again, I want to read Deuteronomy chapter number 8. Deuteronomy chapter number 8. Dethroning the enemy. Chapter number 8. Deuteronomy chapter number 8. Be careful to follow every command I am giving you today. So that you may, number one, live. Number two, increase. Number three, enter. Number four, possess the land that the Lord promised on oath to your forefathers. That simply means there are some things that God has promised in your life. And unless you follow the commands, you are not going to inherit that which God has promised in your life. And therefore, again, I want us to pray today and tell God, God, whatever you have promised in my life, give me instruction on how I can live it, how I can increase it, how I can enter it, and how I can possess it in the name of Jesus Christ. Pray that prayer. Tell God, God, today I want to hear your instructions that will guide me in the mighty name of Jesus Christ so that I may get that which you have in store for me in the name of Jesus Christ. That is my prayer, God. God, I know there are some commands that you are giving me today. I am praying that every barrier that blocks us from getting your command from this altar, Jehovah, they are broken now in the name of Jesus Christ. I shall listen to your command. I shall enjoy your command. I shall do your commands. I shall be able to follow every command. In the name of Jesus Christ. That is my prayer. That is my plea. I also want you to pray and tell God, God, I want to live, I want to increase, I want to access, and I want to possess that which you have in store for me. Pray those four things. Tell God, God, I want to live. Whatever you have said, I shall live. You have said, I shall live in perfect health. I want to live it. You have said, I will live in abundance. I want to live it. You have said, I will live glorifying you. I want to live it. You have said, none of us shall lack our meat. I want to live it. Whatever you have said, O oh Jehovah, I want to live it. I am praying for increase in this church. Yes, the time for few is over. It is our time to increase. I speak a season of increase upon this church in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The season of increase upon this church. Declare your increase right now. Tell God I want to increase. 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 You cannot increase until you tell God that you want to increase. The Bible says, for your father knows what you want. But until you tell him, he will not accomplish it. Tell him. If you cannot tell him, you have no business in being in church. You better stay where you cannot tell him. Tell him, God, I want to increase. That is the reason you came. My house shall be called the house of prayer and not a den of robbers. Tell him, Father, this is my prayer that I shall increase. This is my prayer that I shall access. This is my prayer that I shall possess in the name of Jesus Christ. That is my prayer. Verse number two. The Bible says, remember how you are, how you are father, how the Lord your God led you all the way in the desert for 40 years for 40 years to humble you and to test you in order that you may know, in order that you may know what was in your heart whether or not you would keep his commands. Now when I read this scripture I knew for sure the reason why we have been undergoing through the hell that we have been undergoing through. Remember how the Lord your God led through the way. 
in the desert. So the reason why I was in the desert was so that God may humble me. And the reason why I have been in the desert is so that God may test to know that which is in my heart. He was actually taking me through the hell. He was taking me through bad places. He was causing me to lack. He was causing me to have diseases. He was causing me to have fights everywhere. He was causing me to be rejected and dejected. He was causing trouble in my life. He was causing my faithful people to go. Reason is because he wanted to humble me. But right now I am humble because I went through whatever I went through. I know you have been undergoing through bad things. But God was taking you there so that he may humble you. And number two, so that he may test you. Can you pray, God, I subject myself to your humility. No pride shall be in my life. No haughty spirit I shall harbor in my life in the mighty name of Jesus. Can you denounce the spirit of pride out of your life right now? In the mighty name of Jesus, you cannot possess that which God has in store for you until you are humble. I know you have been undergoing bad things in your life, but God was taking you through those bad things so that he may humble you, so that humility may be your portion. Jehovah, I am humble. I subject myself again to your humility in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Every spirit of pride in my life, I now remove it. I now remove it. Every pride in this church, I now subject it. Uh, yes, into your threshing point. Let it be destroyed beyond remedy in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let me tell you, pride is every time you think that you can do without God. Every time you think it is your might, every time you think it is by you, every time you think it is by your heart that is actually doing that, that is what we call pride. And some of us are very proud. We have been thinking that whatever we have and whatever we have been doing, it is as a result of how good we are. You know, there is one lady that was here last Sunday and told us sometimes it is good to ask God, what is this that I have put before you? That one was a test of pride. And you know, when I went back, I told God, God, you must show me what really has been hindering me. And let me tell you, there are so many things that have been hindering you just because your heart is proud. You are thinking that you can make it. You are thinking by your education you are good. You are thinking but your prayers, they are the ones that matter. Let me tell you, it is not your prayer that God uses. He can do without your prayer and still remain God. Let me tell you, it is not your money that God uses. He can do without your money. Let me also tell you, it is not your education and your knowledge that he is using to bless you. He can do without it. So many people have been blessed in business, even without knowledge about business. Reason is because he does not require any raw material from you for him to bless you. And that is what you should understand today. That until now, God is not interested with what you are to offer to him. He is just interested with a humble heart. And therefore, tell God, create in me another new heart that can bless you. Another new heart that can lift you. Another new heart that can be humble unto you. Another new heart that can submit to you. Another new heart that can serve you without grumbling, without murmuring. Tell God, God, I want another new heart. Pray that prayer right now. Just like David, David pray and say, create in me another new heart, a steadfast spirit within me. Jehovah created today. Jehovah created today. Jehovah created today. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. It is not by mind. It is not by power. It is not by your experience. It is not by anything. Father creating me another new heart that can help by your things. That can help by your things in Jesus. 
precious and mighty name verse number 3 the bible says he humbled you causing you to hunger he humbled you by making sure you have no money you have no house rent you have nothing so that you can rely on him he humbled you because he wanted every time people are saying that god has uh, uh, you know they have enjoyed a lot of things you are not there to enjoy such things he was humbling you and then feeding you with his provision it simply means even when you are passing through that hell still god was with you he was providing unto you that is why you are still right now able to survive because he has been on your side if the lord had not been on your side let israel say if the lord was not on our side then our enemies would have swallowed us alive but I know for sure that you have not been swallowed alive because he has been on your side and he shall still remain on your side in the name of Jesus Christ. Can you shout amen? Even if your father, even if your mother forsake you, even if your husband, even if your wife forsake you, even if your children forsake you, even if your parents forsake you, still God is there. The Bible says he is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. He shall stick with you. Whether you are passing through hell, he shall still be there. I am praying that God will show forth himself in your life again in the mighty name of jesus christ tell god god show forth yourself in my life again keep on showing forth yourself in my life again in the mighty name of the lord jesus christ that is my prayer jesus keep on showing forth yourself defend you with manna which neither you no, your fathers are known. It is simply means God can do something that has never been seen, something that has never been heard in your life. And that is my prayer for you. May God do something in your business that nobody has ever seen. May God do something in your family that nobody has ever seen. In the name of Jesus Christ, say amen. He did that to teach you that man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. And verse number four, the Bible says your clothes did not wear out. That simply means you can grow with your clothes. Now you haven't had me. Everything can grow, including your clothes. You know, sometimes when we grow, our clothes become small. No, our clothes don't grow with us. They don't become small. I have a hand. People say, my trouser became small. No, it is not your trouser that became small. It is you who grew. But the children of Israel for 40 years, they were growing together with their clothes. That simply means... <clears throat> There are some things that should grow with you. There are some things that should not leave you as you mature in godliness. And that is my prayer for you. In the name of Jesus Christ, none will be outdated. None will live your life. You shall grow with your business. You shall grow with your family. I shall not leave my family alone. You know, sometimes when we grow, it is like we grow and leave some people. This time I am not leaving you. I, I know what God has told me. Three years to come, I know what will happen to my life. And I am not leaving any of you behind. I am not leaving any of you behind. People will marvel at this church. Let me repeat that again. People will marvel at this church. We have been forcing people to come. We shall be telling them to have certain qualification to come. You haven't earned me because it will be a guarantee 
when you come to this church that some things will happen to your life. I know what I am talking about. I know it. You are not believing. Believe. Believe. Don't be in the same water with me when you are not believing. Believe. Your clothes did not wear out. Your feet did not swear. That means if I was wearing number 10, you are total. As I grew, the shoe was on grew with me. That is what the Bible is actually saying. May things grow with you. In the name of Jesus. No, when I gave my life to Jesus, I was very happy. As I grew, I lost some things. And it is like I was not, I am not feeling the way I was feeling when I gave my life to Christ. No, they should grow with me. I am praying, let things grow with you in Jesus' name. Verse number five. Know then in your heart that as a man disciplines his son, so the Lord your God disciplines you. And verse number six, the reason I love Deuteronomy, it is because it is the book in the Old Testament that Jesus quoted first, quoted most. It is the book that Jesus quoted most. Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy is unique. Hebrews is also unique. John is also unique. And I am glad I am called John, son of Zechariah. Number six, the Bible says, observe the commands. Can you tell your neighbor, observe the commands? Walk in his ways. Tell your neighbor, walk in his ways. Revere him. Tell your neighbor, fear God. That is the only problem you have. You have not been following instructions. You have not been walking in his ways. You have not been fearing him. And verse number six, I want you to pray and tell God, God, allow me to observe your commands. Allow me to walk in your ways. And allow me to fear you. This coming year, beginning now, in the name of Jesus Christ. That is my prayer, Jesus. That in this church we shall walk as by your commands. Your ways are not our ways. Just as heaven is far from earth, so your ways are far from our ways. We shall fear you. The fear of God shall be here. In Jesus' name. Verse number seven. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land. That is what I wanted to tell you. I said it in the first service. I am saying it again. This is a season. It is a season we are entering into. I know you are not aware. But we are entering into a season of being entered into a good land. A good lad. Can you say a good lad? It is a season we are entering into. And the Bible describes the lad. The lad. Four ways that the land will have. A land with the streams and pools of water. It is not a land that is dry. Can you say I shall not be dry again? I shall not suffer dryness again. Can you declare I shall not suffer dryness again? Dryness, spiritual dryness, you shall not have it. Financial dryness, you shall not have it. Yes, power dryness, you shall not have it. In the name of Jesus Christ, can you declare, pray in that season, declare, that the season of dryness is over. The season of dryness is over. Water me, oh God. Refresh me, oh God. Water me, oh God. I shall be called Beula. I shall be called Ebusba. I shall be water of the Lord. 
in the name of Jesus. Number two, that land you never know dryness. So some of you, you have been having a dry life. Dryness is over. Amen. Prophesy to your neighbor, tell him neighbor, neighbor. your dryness is, dryness is over. Prophesy to another one, say neighbor, neighbor. your dryness is over. Tell him your spiritual dryness is over. You shall be prayerful. You shall understand the word. Tell him you shall fast. Your spiritual dryness is over. Tell him you shall feel God. You shall walk with God. God's presence shall be your trademark. In the name of Jesus. God will fill you. Your dryness is over. Some of you have been undergoing a season of drought. To know money has been a problem in your life. But let me tell you. This season. And I told the first services. That I am not talking about time. I am talking about season. And in Bible study, we were able to differentiate between time and seasons. We are not talking about time. We are not talking about a moment. We are talking about a period. That is what we are talking about. It is a period. A period. I decree that is your portion. It can be more than a year. It can be less than a year. It is a period. Number two. That land, that good land that he is giving you. Verse number eight. A land with wheat and barley, vines and fig trees, pomegranates, olive oil and honey. It's a land full of food. A land that is full of food, no hunger. No hunger. This season of saying that you know this time around they have not been paid. That season is over. Whether paid or not paid, you shall still eat. Your life does not come from your pay sleep. Your life comes from the almighty God. Your life does not come from your work. It is a land with wheat. And it does not tell me I will plant the wheat. It says it is already a land with wheat. So mine is wheat. I am declaring a season of eating. A season of eating. Tell your neighbor, neighbor. It is my time to eat. Tell another one, neighbor. It is my time to eat. You know they have been eating. They have been buying cars. They have been blessed. They have been buying land. And you are still waiting on them. Waiting for your turn. But the Bible says when the turn... For Esther came when the turn for Esther came. It is our turn. It has come. Can you say it is my turn? It is my season. People have been paid. 
you haven't been paid. People have been given jobs. You haven't been given a job. People have been promoted. You haven't been promoted. People have been benefiting. They have been having at their families. You are always a flower maid. Let other people also become your flower maids. In the name of Jesus. It is my season. It is my season. People, you have been relying on handouts. People have been waiting. You are waiting for people to pay for your house rent. You are waiting for people to bless you. So blessing you are waiting upon people. It is your time also to bless. It is your time also to bless. And some of you, you have been blessing. You have never been blessed. It shall come back. A good measure. Pressed down. Shaken together. And running over. A land with wheat. A land with barley. A land with vines. A land with fig trees. A land with pomegranates. A land with olive oil, anointing. A land with honey, sweetness. Your life shall be full of sweetness. Let God crown your life with sweetness. Tell your neighbor, my life shall be a sweet life. Bitter life. Bye bye. Bitter life. Sand life. Bye bye. Sand life. Bitter life. Depressed life. Stressed life. Bye bye. Bye bye. Some of you always hear people talk about happiness. You have never known happiness. It is your season for happiness. Declare it is my season of happiness. Beginning today. The 18th day of December. I enter into a covenant. With Elohim. A covenant of happiness. In Jesus name. I cannot live crying throughout. Being told, you know, God will wipe my tears. When? He is wiping them today. 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 I cannot live treating my mother in the hospitals. My father in the hospitals. Every money I get is going to the hospital. I declare that season cut out of your life. It is your season of happiness. They have refused to give you work. Let the time for tenders come. It is your time to receive the tenders. I've been receiving it. What did they do to God that we haven't done? What did they do to God? And even if we never did it, it is not by works, lest anybody may boast. It is by the grace of God. It is our season. It is my season. It is my season. It is my season. Number three, lads. The Bible says a land where brand will not be scarce and you lack nothing. That simply means I can lack nothing. This season is not a season of lack. 
It is a season of abundance. Abundance is my portion. Can you say I shall have abundance? Can you say I shall have abundance? It is your season of abundance. The Bible says even the lions and the young lions may lack but I cannot lack. I was young and now I am old and I have never seen a Pastor Mukundi lacking bread or his children looking for food. For me and my children that God has given me in Reina Church, we shall be for signs and wonders in the name of Jesus. Go celebrate Christ Christmas. It is time to eat. We shall fast in next week. Jan January. Have you told us January? Yes. It is our time to eat. But if you have a covenant of fasting with God, you can still go ahead. But what I'm telling you is time to celebrate. It is our time to celebrate. Celebration is our portion. We shall lack nothing. The Bible says the Lord is my shepherd. I shall lack nothing. He makes me lie in green pastures. I am lying there because I am full though they are green. I still need nothing to eat. Because I am already full. Abundance. Your money will be waiting for the other tranche of money to arrive. It shall not get exhausted before the other money arrives. I declare that is your portion. You know some of us we have been surviving on salary advances. I declare that season is over. It is not salary advances now. You will be having more than enough. Can you say I shall have more than enough? Can you pray that prayer right now and declare this season I shall have more than enough in the name of Jesus. More than enough in the name of Jesus. More than enough in this church. In the name of Jesus. Some of you, you have been feeling sad. Every time we ask you for offerings. Because you do not have, we understand. It is not your issue. It is not your problem. It is because of where you have been humbled. By lack of it. But this season around, you shall have more than enough. In the name of Jesus. You shall not be saying the economy. The economy is bad. Your economy shall never be bad forever. And ever, amen. Your economy shall never be bad forever. And ever, amen. The third time, your economy shall never be bad forever. And ever, amen. Because my economy does not get its regulation from central bank. It is not the economic policies, the fiscal policies and the monetary policies that makes my economy. My economy is manufactured from heaven. And listen to the word of God. Tomorrow, a seer of wheat shall be costing very cheap to you. Not to others, to you. Not to others, to you. Listen to the word of God. A season for eating donkey's hands is over. It is over. It is over. There shall be abundance food in your house. There shall be abundance food in your house. In the name of Jesus. You will lack nothing. Can you prophesy to your neighbor? Tell your neighbor, your ne no, my neighbor. You shall lack nothing. I know you have been lacking. 
But that season is over. We are in another season. We shall lack nothing. We shall lack nothing. In the name of Jesus. And the Bible says the land where the rocks are iron. Mawe itakuwa chuma ya kuza. And you can dig copper out of the hills. That means a land full of minerals. A land that is full of resources. Declare you shall have enough resources. I shall have enough resources. Some of you, you shall become landlords. You shall become landlords. In the name of Jesus. The Bible says when you have eaten and are satisfied, usionyesha mungu tumbo. Ambia jirani yako usionyesha mungu tumbo. Ati nji umepata gali sasa pasta si mutu. Ati these pastors nowadays they are keeping us a lot in church. Una tuangaliria saa hivi. Nji umeshipa ni anointing yetu imekusibisha. It is whatever I'm prophesying that will make you rich. I am waiting to see what God told me about this church. I'm just waiting. A church that is presently 700 members. But we are only registering 100. I'm waiting to see. I'm waiting to see. I am just waiting. I'm just waiting. I'm just waiting. When you have eaten and you are satisfied, praise the Lord. That simply means our praise shall increase. Our praise here shall increase. It shall increase. Anything to trying to decrease the praise and worship in this altar is under arrest. It is under arrest. Verse 11. Be careful that you do not forget your mind. Be careful. Acha kusema hao watu hao watu. Hawa watu. Unjue ni Mungu. Not to forget the Lord your God, failing to observe his commands, his laws and his decrees that I am giving you here today. Verse 12. Otherwise when you eat and are satisfied, it is our time to eat. When you build, when you eat, it is not a question of if you eat. It is a question of when will you eat. I know you haven't heard me because you don't know English. Understand it in Kiembu or Kimeru or Kinjaka. Understand it. When you eat, not if you eat. When you build I declare you are builders in Jesus name. Some of you you have tried to build you cannot build. This coming year we shall build. Can you say oh Lord I know I shall build this season in Jesus name. I haven't seen Daniel. I have seen season. I want you to mark When that season is expired God will give us another season. But it is our season to build. Some of you you build families. You establish. Some of you you build businesses. May God raise those business people now. 
Lift up your hands, close your ear, eyes. Tell God to make you a business person. Tell God to, re- to make you a business person. Tell God to make you a business person. In the name of Jesus. Some of you, you need not to be employed. You are looking for jobs that will never come. Some of you, you are the people to employ. No, when I was 25 years, God told me, I have not created you to be employed. And when I remembered that, I decided not again to go for employment in that county government. I am not meant to be that way. I should not be receiving salary. I should be paying salaries. I am transforming some of you. My salary comes from God. Your salary shall come from God. I am not talking about employing two people. I am not talking about employing your house guard. No, that is not employment. I am talking of companies. I am releasing companies. God, if you can hear me. Create companies from here. Make companies from this altar. In the name of Jesus. God, if you can hear me. But I know he hears me. He hears me when I call. Verse 13. And when your hands and flock grow... It is our season of growth. Can you say it is my season of growth? You shall grow. Shake your neighbor because they are not hearing it. Tell them may you grow in number, in development, in your body, in your career, in your spirituality. Grow. It will happen. This church will grow. It will grow. It will grow in branches. It will grow in population. It will grow in gifts. People here will be praying as they sing. People will be getting healed. It will grow. It will grow. And when you are silver and gold increase, money increase. I prophet. Can you do it like this? Can you say money? Hear the word of God. Increase in my life. Money. Hear the word of God. Increase in my life. We are the pastors in increase kwa walevi. The Bible says judgment begins with the house of God. If judgment begins with the house of God, it simply means blessings also begin with the house of God. And that is why gold and silver shall increase in your life. I don't know how much you count as offerings. But whatever you count, I multiply it. In the name of Jesus. I know some of you, you are giving. I want you to change your giving style. The way you have been giving. Begin working by faith. Don't say, you know, I've been giving a hundred. Move from there. Behave like you are blessed. God bless me. 
and cause my gold and silver to increase. Pray that prayer. Pray that prayer. Tell God, God, gold and silver belongs to you. Cause them to increase. Cause them to increase. Cause them to increase in the name of Jesus. And the Bible says, and all you have is multiplied. That means, Mama, your cows will be multiplied. Multiplication simply means, Mama, multiplication simply means that you have more. Watch as the honey. Let them multiply. Multiply effect. Multiply effect. I am not prophesying to my wife. I am prophesying to a child of God. Because I am the preacher and I am the priest. Can you say multiplier effect? Ten plus ten is twenty. But ten times ten is a hundred. I am declaring multiplier effect in your life. My salary cannot be enough. Your salary cannot be enough unless it is multiplied. I am declaring multiplication. Multiplication. Verse number 17. The Bible says, you may say to yourself, my power and the strength of my hands have produced this wealth for me. In short, I want again to declare and you are yet to see that this church shall be the wealthiest church in this legion. It shall have no equal. I know you are not hearing it because you want me to say the church you come from. I'm saying, where, which church do you come from if it is not Reina's church? This is the church. This church. It shall have the wealthiest people around. People may stop it. People may try to do whatever they want. But this is a done deal. It is already done on 17th December. It was already done. There is nothing that can change that utterance. There is nothing that can change that statement. There is nothing. I know some of you won't get rich without your consent. You won't get rich without thinking it. You won't get rich without doing anything. Because God says, Lest you say it is by my power and the strength of my hands that has produced this wealth. But the Bible says, Thou shalt remember the Lord your God because it is Him that gives you the ability to produce wealth and so confirms His covenant that he hand with his servants yesterday as it is today. Done deal. Mission accomplished. Go and produce well in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Go and produce well in the name of Jesus. One, but they have preached. Yes. Today I need them to prophesy. Prophecy is good. But the reason why some prophetic ones don't work in your life 
it is because you do not ask. Verse number one. You do not ask the instructions to follow. Be careful to follow every command I am giving you today. The last is the last, second last. So that you may possess the land that the Lord promised. Be careful to follow commands to possess the promise. You follow commands to possess the promise. Iso vitu zote ni muambia. There are some instructions that you follow for you to get it. That is where you come in. Ask yourself which are those instructions that I need to follow. And God bless you. Stand up on your feet.
God again. My name is Gift Olivia and I have a song. Min ko ni komtoto alegina na ni napenda pasa sa babara tumbeanga. Baba, umejua kunifulai sha. Baba, umenifuta machozi dadio dadio. Umejua kunifulai sha. Baba. Takusifu mirele, mwelele ya tabasa ngulangu Usoni, kaleja shafula hayangu Mwoyoni, ukanijibu kwa wakati Nisio zanyo Baba, umejua kunifulaisha Nilio itualana Nimefanyika balaka Nimeonekana sifai Umeni eshimisha, umeni zidai. Oh baba, baba, umejua kunifulaisha. Thank you. Let me pray for Olivia. Because umeskia na nipenda. Sasa mpaka mie pia ni mpende. Sindio? Amen. Father, I thank you because of your servant today. Thank you because of giving her the gift of years. Jehovah, she shall live in the name of Jesus. She had had some accidents some days ago, but you protected her. And I thank you because of protecting her. Right now, I am blessing her. I'm blessing her with the blessings of protection, favor, grace, and power. Let your anointing all forever be upon her. Cause her to sing and to sing for you in this generation. Amen. Jehovah God, I am also praying that she shall continuously minister in the name of Jesus Christ. I now declare she belongs to the Levitical family. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Jehovah God, you shall bless her. Any enemy that is Olivia's enemy becomes your enemy. Fight every enemy. In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We pray for our children. Let them pray for them. Pray for them. Ama wana mtoto alikuja na ye. Mary, you're going to come on and I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you. Let the way I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you. Father, I surround our children with the favor of God. These children shall be mighty. I put in their mind the fear of God. I put in their hearts your commandments. I put them and I write them at the back of their minds. I release your wisdom upon our children right now. I protect our children from every harm. Every demonic attack against our children 
I send it back to the sender in the name of Jesus Christ. Our children are governed by the blood. These children shall rise, build where normal children of this society rise. This generation shall fulfill your purposes. This generation shall grow and touch lives. This generation shall be blessed of you. Let them carry you, God. Let these people become your permanent domicile, a place of your habitation in the name of Jesus Christ. Let these children bring delight to us. Let them be a source of our joy in the name of Jesus Christ. That is our prayer, that is our plea in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Patrick Moore.